Greetings, my fellow YouTube nurses. I have not speaking to you for a long time. Let's just say that I've been trying to stay focused and trying to stay ahead of the game, guys. I want to say thanks to everybody for subscribing, hitting that like button, and spreading the videos. So you guys are probably asking where Nurse Bravo is. Again, we're going to collaborate real soon, I promise. We've just been you know, very, very busy with everything. And uh, for everybody who's been following me, thanks. From day one, I just want to say thanks. And uh, man, I'm just getting chest pain thinking about it. Chest pain, let's talk about it. What are the labs, diagnostics, and follow-up tests that they're going to you know, give to you if you're a patient trying to you know, get better at a hospital? From what I know, from what I recall, don't quote me, don't use this as you know, your own medical advice. I'm just telling you what I've learned in the hospital, guys. I'm spreading it to you guys. Okay, so first and foremost, what happens you represent, you represent, present yourself to the hospital with chest pain? The first thing your doctor is going to want to do is they're going to go ahead and do some blood tests. They're going to go get your uh, CBC, Chem 7, BNP. They're going to go ahead and order CPK, and they're going to go ahead and do some troponins times three. So CBC, that's going to ch show your H and H, your blood. And it's going to look at other um, blood tests. They're going to look at also Chem 7. That's electrolytes, guys. That's going to be your you know magnesium, potassium and also uh, your uh, sodium. Now that's all important for your heart to function probably. So they're gonna check all that, see how imbalanced it is. CPK, that's also important too. CPK is basically shows the muscle damage and that's gonna be something that they're gonna look at and cause what happens is when you have heart damage, CPK, um, it leaks into your bloodstream. So they're gonna look at that also a factor. The other thing they're gonna look at is your troponins. They order three of them times three. So every eight hours and so forth. Cause usually after a heart attack, your um, troponins elevate after a few hours to six, and after 12, boom, they're really, really high. So that just shows that you have heart damage, usually caused from a heart attack. So they do three sets of those. The other one they're gonna check for is BMP, that's usually after heart attack, whatever, so forth, but they use that for evidence showing how heart, how your heart can function, and BMP shows how well your heart is just um, working properly. So they're gonna order that. Um, that's a blood test. Now I know for sure for um, the a second part they're gonna check for is x-ray. X-ray is very important. X-ray shows your condition of your lungs and your heart, how uh, big and how um, the size of your heart is. Now, it also shows the arteries too, and um, that's very important. Or when they check out your lungs, it also tells you if you may have a collapsed lung or uh, if your lungs, you know, still there working properly. So that's very important to do a chest X-ray. They want to just kind of rule anything out. The other thing they're going to do is an EKG. Now, that is an electroactivity of your heart showing if it's normal sinus, if you may have PVCs, PACs, or any abnormal sinus rhythm. So they want to look at that so it could be another factor why your heart is, you know, if there's something wrong with it. The other thing they do after all those tests, and after the next day, they might do a follow-up test, which is called a Lexi scan or a stress test. Stress test, um, or in other words, Lexi scan, you, your NPO, nothing by mouth, you know, six to eight hours before your test, and um, what they do is they check, they test and check your heart under pressure basically how you are when you're moving up a treadmill how you're walking whatever the doctor has ordered and they inject a dye to see how your arteries function and everything's going on with your heart then they do a second part of the stress test where you're sitting talking and they want to see how your heart is basically working and so that's another thing they do the other thing they may do with a follow-up test is going to be called um, it's a echocardiogram the echocardiogram shows if there's any calcium buildup in your arteries or so forth, so that's very important. And then they also do which is called the coronary cath catheterization. So when I was in the cardiac cath lab, it was cool to see this. What they do is they inject dye, and it helps identify like uh, individual arteries and your heart that may be occluded or if they're narrowed or blocked or whatever. And it's cool because they do x-ray every about minute or so to see where the dye is going in the heart. It's pretty tight. I remember when I did it. I loved it. So that's very cool. And if there's problems with that, they may even lead to surgery, such as bypass surgery, uh, stents, uh, balloons. They may also even do like a dissection repair in the heart. Now, those are types of diagnostics and, and uh, repairs and surgeries they may do. The last but not least is going to be the medications. They're going to give you some types of uh, medications, which we talked in another video. So nitro, aspirin, they're going to give you clot busters, blood thinners, and um, also anti-anxiety medications. Those are the main things that I've seen from the hospital since I've been working on the telemed search unit. But I will tell you guys, do not utilize all this information and be thinking, oh yeah, pff, I know what's going on. You gotta go and follow up with your own doctor. This is just what I've learned from my hospital. So my ladies and gentlemen, I wanna say thanks for subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video. My fellow YouTube nurses, peace.